Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in English of the channel and uh, this is a thing I already explained in a post on Twitter and, uh, and Facebook that I would try to produce a bit of more international content on the channel this is because some topics for example idols, idol groups and then people in Italy are not that interested in them so if I did a video in, Ita in Italian like the audience would be very restricted. I did a video last year on the on the AKB Source and Q and I had so little feedback on that that I said it's not worth producing this kind of video in Italian. And uh, another reason it's actually I had inspiration for this corner which I would like to become a semi regular corner and I will call Idol Talks. That's because I will talk about idols of course. <laughs> And the inspiration from this corner came from uh, my experiences this uh, the summer at the, at the European Convention, especially, uh, I would say, two experiences. The first one is the interview that they gave to Komi. If you didn't see that yet, I would put a link uh, down below uh, of the interview. Uh, so this year, the Komi, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, to have an interview with Chris, he's uh, one of the staff of, uh, of uh, uh, online streaming which talk about a bit of everything from games to anime and also about idols and he's actually quite a veteran fan in the, in the, idol, uh, in the idol fandom uh, I mean he used to go to Sato Amino Handshakes even before I even got to my first uh, J-pop concert so yeah he definitely has a lot more experience than I do and it was a very interesting interview like uh, we kind of uh, confronted a bit of uh, different view on the on idols on Anison and uh, etc because we have very different experiences and um, I mean like uh, he's more into um, underground idols and I mean, he also started from mainstream idols, but now he mainly focus, uh, focuses on underground idols. And uh, I'm still mostly a mainstream fan. So there's a, uh, some difference between these two worlds. Because my experience as, like, as a mainstream idol fan is more on the community side. So I experience more of the community interaction, uh, of interacting with the other fans, of uh, building this kind of community. Uh, where fans can meet and uh, confront their ideas and enjoy concerts together while his experience is more like direct interaction with idols which is very difficult in the mainstream um, in the mainstream circuit and it's almost impossible in the uh, Anison fandom like Anison artists don't have are not like idols who actually go and meet their fans go, uh, do handshakes, go sign events, photo events and those kind of stuff is is a complete rarity in the Anison world and something that we have in convention in Europe which I'm extremely grateful for but in Japan uh, it almost doesn't exist so I don't really have that kind of experience of direct interaction with idols except for maybe showroom which you are in a, uh, online on a, in a room with thousands of people and uh, or, or this kind of event where there's still a lot of fun but it's not a regular thing so the idol rarely remembers your face, remembers your name and that's a very different thing uh, and a very cool thing I would say like that the fact that the artist actually knows you personally I would say like he, she, she remembers you over your face and every time you return say oh you're back or, and and it's a thing I will actually talk also about during my for my experience in Japan Expo. So let's jump to the main topic of this video, which is going to be my experience at the uh, Japan Expo mainly. And that's because well, Japan Expo was kind of like a, a bit of rediscovering of the idol world for me. Like uh, I was uh, a pretty big fan, but I lately kind of like not follow that much like even this year so thank you even if Turina won it uh, I didn't really follow it as closely as last year so thank you for some reason but mainly because I was busy but uh, 
and um, Japan Expo was kind of a bit of a the rediscovering of the of the beauty of the idol world. And at the first I wasn't even going to to be there. Like well, Japan Expo used to be a an extremely good convention. It used to be like what well, number one in Europe, like hands down. They invited. Uh, they invited AKB48, I think it's like the only convention that got them to come here. They had Moni Musume, they had Nogizaka46, so extremely big names at this convention. And then suddenly uh, the guest list just like, uh, just cleaned up. So <laughs> I think it started from like two or three years ago that the guest list was just so uninteresting, was at least like compared to the previous years. That they say, well, they're done for. They probably don't have any more budget to invite any any big artists. And this year, surprisingly, they they put up again like quite interesting guest list and quite interesting is to say the list. So they had uh, Wasami, they had Equal Love, which is one of the biggest recent groups, and they had Maneki Kecha. Uh, but the main guest for me, at least, uh, like the one that actually convinced me to go. Is uh, is Niga Kirisa, the former leader of the Hello Project, Moni Musume. This year is the 20th anniversary of uh, of, uh, of um, Moni Musume, so they <coughs> they invited her to as ambassador to, uh, to talk about the project and everything. I actually didn't go to that event because it was on Saturday and I couldn't go there on Saturday, so I only did. Thursday and Friday, but she was there at the Hello Project booth during those days to do check in and signs. So when they announced that, I say, well, uh, it's like a unique opportunity to meet to meet Gaki-san. So I have to go. So I took like the cheapest ticket that I could find uh, from uh, from England to Paris, which is by bus. Never do that, by the way. It's a terrible experience. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and then I went to Japan Expo and I was there Thursday and Friday and it was such a great experience that like I don't regret it like not even one bit and yeah, and during this video I kind of wanted to talk about the groups that I met my personal experience with them and so a bit of their uh, history and uh, their, their works Okay, so we start start talking about uh, Gaki san of course well, I, I, she was the main reason I was there in the first place and uh, if you don't know her uh, you probably don't follow Moni Musume at all <laughs> because she was in there for more than 10 years she was long, she's like one of the uh, longest serving members in Moni Musume and in Hello Project in general and uh, she is a former leader, as I said, but her leadership here was quite short. Well, first of all, she's a fifth generation member, so same generation as uh, Takahashi Ai, uh, who was the leader before her, and uh, she graduated just slightly uh, later than, uh, than Ai-chan, so uh, her leadership just came uh, like after Ai, uh, just before uh, Sayumi and it was quite short, just uh, less than a year so in fact I have, well, I wasn't even a fan of that period but I have like very little uh, impression for her leadership here except for one song which is Renai Hanta which is a very very cool song and yeah personally uh, I, made, I actually became a Hello Project fan uh, quite recently I would say uh, I think it's like uh, between uh, the um, Paris Kobo uh, disbandment and the Cute disbandment, so I became a fan in that period. I don't remember exactly when. It was definitely before the Cute concert in Paris because I was there, of course. And uh, yeah, and I m mainly followed the other groups from the project, not Moni Mosume. So I followed Cute, I now I'm following Angerm after their concert because it was so great. And uh, and then I started following a bit Kobushi Factory and Tsubaki Factory. But yeah, I don't know, Moni Musume, I really like the old generations, but uh, it kind of didn't attract me as much as the other groups. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, like for Moni Musume, uh, my favorite generation is actually the sixth, like the of generation of Kamei, of Mikiti, 
so just the, the one after uh, the one of Nikakisa. Um, I mean, the more or less almost the same period. So that's like the golden age of uh, of Moni Musume, or the second golden age, like we should have to say it, for generations, of course, because they they also made very good songs. But yeah, I mean, uh, Gakisa is like a monument of uh, of uh, of Moni Musume, like a, le a living legend. So of course, any Hello Project fan from any Hello Project group. Uh, would would be there like they announced that she would she's there to do checkies signs and uh, meet and greets and etc. So yeah, I'm no exclusion. When they announced it, I bought my ticket and went there. And it was definitely a good experience. She she's a very very nice girl to talk to. Well, girl woman probably I would say. And um, yeah, she uh, has a quite good interaction with fans and there were a lot of fans there who are uh, veteran fans like like me so they had like photo booth from her early period and uh, some of them like the poses etc so the event worked like that there was like the hello project booth uh, like the specific booth and she was there every day for one hour to sign her photos, so they uh, they sold the the her photos there for ten euros each, which you can have signed or or you can actually have any other merch signed for each photo you buy, which is a very cool thing. Like management usually tend to be strict, but they they were quite um, uh, quite lax on on rules. So any kind of uh, monuments merch could be signed just by buying a photo. Which is kind of steel because, okay, no, it's actually a normal price. But I would say, yeah, that was a very cool thing about them. And uh, when you spent more than 50 euros in uh, at the booth, you could have a, ch a checky with her. And during the second day, they actually introduced like this new thing that if you if you already spent the 50, you could just get a new checky with a with an extra 10. <laughs> Uh, which I did, of course. I was actually like ready to spend another fifty because she had a different outfit in the second day, but fortunately I only had to spend an extra tenner and I could get a second checky. And yeah, I actually found out like from other fans that it was like not just you could spend a ten to get an extra checky, you could get an extra checky for every ten you spend. So uh, yeah, I kind of missed out on that, but I'm okay. I think one checky per outfit was pretty okay. Like I will show you them. So yeah, this is the check here too, as you can see, like two days, two different outfits. And yeah, I'm not very imaginative with poses, so they look exactly the same, but just with different clothes. That's why I said that one, uh, yeah, one per day was enough for me, because I, I really not imaginative enough for poses to do like different checkies with different poses and kind of regret on that. But uh, well, yeah, I mean, like when, I, when you are there, you kind of like, your mind just blank out and uh, yeah you don't really think you just do it and it just goes on very fast uh, I mean people who has been on uh, meet and greets and handshakes know what I'm talking about so yeah so these are the photos I will show you also the photos that I got signed there uh, which are these ones so yeah very nice photos they are they're all personal, personally dedicated, of course. It's a normal thing in conventions uh, to prevent resales or scalping and all that like dirty stuff. So, uh, And it's also a plus for us fans, of course. So yeah, um, yeah, this was my experience at the Hello Project booth and I spent tons of cash on that, <laughs> that place because they had like, uh, they have t-shirts, they have towels, they have um, a lot of merch, some quite nice, I would say, some like the Angerma t shirt from the last concert, so those are going to stay there. <laughs> and yeah, so that was not the only reason uh, I was to Japan Expo, of course, and the other big reason uh, I was there is Wasami. Wasami is the former AKB member, I hope you know her, because she's like the best voice that uh, ever graced AKB in my opinion okay this maybe as I one of the best voices ever graced uh, AKB 
and uh, she's now an anchor singer. She was actually already an anchor singer in AKB. She released solo singles, uh, singing anchor, and that's what she wanted to do. And she succeeded in doing that. So that that's re really really cool. And uh, yeah, she's a seventh generation member from AKB. So was it like? Oh, older generation like well nowadays even ninth generation is considered like veteran generation so i guess she's still quite old generation <laughs> and yeah she she was actually a member of uh, watari roka shiritai just thing that i have very little uh, memory of but mainly because uh, in watari roka uh, Except for my UU, I don't really remember what the <laughs> anyway. I'm sorry about maybe some Watariroka fans will like kill me for that, but Watariroka is basically like uh, some girls around in my UU. So uh, like for me, like for uh, for my person, like personal feelings. So yeah, except for my UU, I don't really have any any memory of who was there, to, uh, unfortunately. And she was not particularly popular, but not even that unpopular actually, because she actually got to under to center in the for under songs in the in the sauce and kill. Um, let me check which one. Um, yeah, she got like one uh, like one next girl center and a future girl center. If I don't I remember well, I didn't write down the data. Um, yeah, so she was moderately popular, and she was like every—I mean, everybody already felt that she was extremely talentful, and uh, which is a thing that not always is is uh, very well rewarded in AKB. And you know, AKB is all about like appearance, charisma, popularity, and popularity is kind of all on that. So t talent is a is a thing that is a bit and uh, comes second there. And we can see it because, like, very talent, talented member like uh, like her, like uh, Masuda Yuka, like uh, Takeuchi Miyu. Now, I mean, she's kind of being rediscovered because of Produce 48, but she actually never ranked in in a Sauce and Kill, which I think it's ridiculous because, like, such a talent. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, AKB actually is kind of cool, like, in promoting their talent but uh, I mean just by that alone they won't get f particularly far in the group so she actually made a good decision of graduating and continue her solo career after AKB already helped her to to start this career and she's doing quite well so I'm happy about that and probably she is happy about that too so yeah let's come to my my experience in, uh, in uh, Japan Expo with her and um, so I had like a signature, the signature session the first day, and then the live, and then she also had a, a collaboration live in the second day, but unfortunately I couldn't go there. And uh, and it was quite good experience, I would say. Like uh, there was not so many fans, but that that comes for all idols group actually, like in the. I kind of have to praise Japan Expo on the on their management on the of the well in general of the event but of the lines in, in, for the signature etc. So the system is that uh, you go there, you get a you queue up, you get like a ticket from the computer, and then you with that ticket you go to the signature session. But like the most popular one, they had a lottery as well, but. The fact that, like, I think they they kind of overestimated the popularity of idols because I think not not even one of those idol session were full. Like, so they signed for the full one hour, or they sold out all the places. So the lottery was kind of not needed in that case. In fact, in the second day, like for the Maneki Ketcha session, uh, they they had like a, a parallel system. I don't know if it was a bag or was intended where you could get a ticket without lottery, and it kind of made sense because like. If you fail the lottery, you need to go to the back of the queue again to try again. And in the queue, they're not only idols, they are like at least 10 or 15 artists, even the most popular one, like the mangaka or... I actually don't know what's popular in this kind of convention, I was there only for idols. But yeah, the queue was quite long. So like 
losing the lottery and going back it was not pleasant at all and if the session is not even full then you say what the fuck yeah but well in general like i mean they kind of have to like uh, to be ready for the war so um, i think in general it was managed quite well in that sense they are probably there were of course a lot of problems as well and i may i might talk about be about that at the end of the of the video anyway yeah my signature session with nevasa me so i had her sign like the, the official photo i would say the the japan expo poster which is this one we'll show you a bit of all the merch uh very very nice photo so i'm <laughs> really happy and of course we had plenty of time to talk and uh, she also asked me a few questions and uh, we could also take a photo together which is also very nice of, uh, of her manager to allow that and uh, yeah it was in general like very very nice she's a very nice girl to talk to and then live at the live she did well, some of her original Anka songs and she also did two AKB Anka, Anka covers she did Heavy Rotation and uh, Koizuru Fortune Cookie uh, which in the Anka version they are like completely different but still so good like the live was so so good and yeah I really hope that I, I have the opportunity to see her again because I mean everything was just so good like uh, she's just such a lovely girl and yeah I hope I will see her again sometimes in uh, Europe in Japan or anywhere so um, the other big group that I actually wanted to see at Japan Expo is Equal Love uh, Equal Love is a pretty recent group it's actually only from last year and this was born from a collaboration between uh, uh, between Yoyogi Animation Academy and uh, Sashihara Rino. So Yoyogi Animation Academy is actually one of the big, if not the biggest, uh, um, school f uh, for um, uh, animation and uh, everything that has to do with animation in Japan. So uh, they, th there's like a, a school for animators, but also for um, directors for sound engineering and uh, for seiyus and uh, recently also for for all kind of seiyus so from say like pure seiyus or seiyu performers and seiyu idols and uh, they recently decided to expand greatly on the on this seiyu idols department uh, by hiring uh, four uh, four big producers, well, three big producers and Sashi Hararino, <laughs> who is actually a very successful producer as well. Like, if we just see how she turned around the HKT48, and um, but what she mainly know, of course, as idol herself, but she's also a very very good producer, I would say. And the other three, of course, are uh, Akimoto, Akimoto P, uh, Tsunku, and uh, Komuro, who is a producer at Avex. So, uh, super girls, uh, yeah, those groups. So, yeah, uh, last year, the Yoani decided to uh, to start the audition. A lot of girls auditioned, and in the end, uh, 12 girls were selected to form Equal Love as a group of uh, Seiyu idols because while well, Yoani uh, trains Seiyu idols but as for Seiyu work they still haven't done anything I think uh, actually they did like a thing with Girlfriend, Be Girlfriend Be Beta uh, but yeah I'm not so sure but anyway like most of the activity so far has been idol activity they have uh, released three singles and the fourth one is coming this autumn so it's a quite a slow release schedule as like compared to either other groups and uh, their first two singles were good, was nice. The third single is Godly, uh, it's Teokure Caution. It's one of the best idol songs from last year, from this year actually, from this year. And, uh, and just so good, like that, just that single sucked me in so badly into the group that uh, I decided that I, I had to go there and meet them. So yeah, uh, for Equal Love I went to their signature session of course, like I queued there uh, quite early in the morning to get the signature, like of course they had a like, lottery system, so in case I failed I had to go back, uh, fortunately I didn't fail, their session was also not full, <laughs> and um, 
they also kind of messed up. Like, I think the staff kind of want to do like a rolling thing because the girl were not already at the same time, so they brought out three first and they kind of want maybe to do some kind of rolling thing. So we just go for the first three, then they change, bring out other girls. So we still get all the signatures, but not all the girls at the same time. But most of the fans didn't understand like what they wanted to do. So in the end, we waited like uh, maybe 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and at the end, all the girls came out in the same time so we could get the signatures. So this is the, the signed paper that I got. I mean, look at, like the photo is just so great and, uh, and the girls are uh, incredible. Like, uh, I think I, I already say, well, not in video, but it's something that I, I say quite often is that Sashihara has like a magnet for cute girls. I mean, she's kind of a lolicon herself. I mean, you just see how, uh, how is her relation with the girls in HKT and everything. But she kind of has this magnet for cute girls. So I think all the Sashihara produced girls, we, um, oh, I include HKT in that, of course, as well, even if not produced by her personally, uh, well, formally at least. But well, it's just full of cute girls and uh, equal love is just like, one of the cutest group that I, I've seen in uh, in general. I mean, uh, every one of them is just so cute. Like when they came out on stage, I was just overwhelmed by cuteness. We just, something didn't happen with any other group, but with them, just seeing all 12 of them there at the same time, it, yeah. And this is one of the reasons why I still cannot choose an Oshiman in this group, because it's so difficult, they are all so cute. And um, so yeah, the handshake event. And their management was actually one of the strictest in the in the um, in the convention, in the sense they well the girl just came out for the session. They just went away immediately. I think on Saturday they were already on the way back to Japan. So they only did uh, the first two days, like I did. So I'm kind of happy about that anyway. And. Uh, Maybe they, no, they had like a, a live on Saturday as well, if I remember well. But well, they basically like, as soon as the, their gig at Japan Expo was over, they were already on the way back. So very busy girls as well. And uh, yeah, during the signing session, uh, they had a lot of signs and no photos, no videos, uh, which is a thing that didn't happen for other groups. Uh, like formally, yeah, you cannot, they say you cannot take it, and then French people do whatever they want, so. Like even during concert, I will talk about this later on the negative side of Japan Expo, but yeah, like photos and videos thing was like wide west there. And, um, and yeah, so I got like the signature with each one of them, I got to talk a bit. I don't know them particularly well because uh, I mean, uh, I just only started following the group uh, recently, I would say, like after the Okure caution, like I knew the group, but I didn't really knew each of the group personally. And uh, in fact, like at the session, I actually went there wearing a, a Clarice shirt, uh, the Clarice Room shirt, actually, not just normal, any Clarice shirt. And um, some of them were actually are actually Clarice fans, so we, we actually like talk about them. Oh, yeah, you're a Clarice fan, I'm too, and I followed them since irony, and yeah, it was very, very cool. And you know, the, the ironic thing is that they signed with Sakura Music this year. Which is the same label as Claris, so now they are even under the same label. Which I find quite amusing and ironic. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I think most of them are actually uh, Annie Song fan. Like, you, you can enter like a group like that if you're an idol fan of an Annie Song fan, and most of them are actually anime fans. So they, so they decide to go into Yoani because of that. So yeah, it was a Pretty cool experience. I actually don't remember who, who exactly told me she was a Clarice fan, unfortunately, for two reasons, of course. Well, I don't, I still I can like associate a name to each face. Uh, and uh, the second one, of course, when you meet them in person, you just don't remember anything that happens after that. Even if we had like plenty of time to talk to them, it was, it was not like the handshake with Angela, which you had like half a second with each girl so of course that you cannot remember anything I, I had like a plenty of time like maybe 10 15 even more than that maybe even like 30 seconds with each of them so it was a pretty relaxed session you know like when there's not that many people that they have to squeeze in uh it becomes a very very relaxed session that 
the thing that I really appreciate about Japan Expo, like about the signature session, that they were all very, very relaxed. Um, so yeah, and then they did the live, of course, and yeah, it just confirmed how great they are, like great dancers, great singers, and great performers in general. So definitely check them out because they are like one of the uh, like the the, the the spicier groups, the, the spiciest of the recent idols groups. So the next group I will talk about is Maneki Kecha, which is another group which uh, were, that was invited at Japan Expo, and which I actually didn't know before Japan Expo. I kind of like know them as the as a winter. Unfortunately for them, I don't have a signature paper to show you because I didn't go to the signature session, I went to the photo session, so I got a, a photo with them, um, which I think you can find on Facebook, uh, or I may cut the video, I don't know, <laughs> no, I will probably not, uh, you can just check on the, my old photos on Facebook if you are interested in seeing them, or just check them out, so they are also quite recent, not as recent as Equal Love, they, I think they started in 2015, so yeah, quite recent. Uh, they are like one of the, well, I, no, actually they are, I think we can consider them as an underground group because their management is actually pretty small. They actually started as a sister group of another other group which is Drop. Uh, and, uh, and Drop, or Drop, as you say in Japanese, it was born as a, okay, this is a very funny thing. So they, they were actually founded by something called the Twin Tail Association of Japan as a twin tail group so that the association basically is a, want to promote like twin tails in uh, in japan like those all like girls wearing like you know uh, the big tails uh, and yeah so this is really quite a funny thing like uh, actually association that promotes a certain type of uh, hairstyle and uh yeah and, and rap was actually uh, well, actually, born as an, like another group promoting this kind of hairstyle. Yeah, anyway, it kind of makes sense. Like, if you look like at least the members of Maneki Kecha, they all look quite good in Twin Tails, and especially Leona. Leona, she looks amazing on the on Twin Tails, but she looks amazing in anything. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Well, Maneki Kecha basically, I think they become a lot more successful and famous than their sister group and uh, I think they, they did like two tours in Japan most of the concerts were sold out and they will do a Budokan concert in September which is a pretty big mark like Budokan usually for idol groups for Anison singer for anybody represent like the, the big step between being a minor artist and a very famous artist like when you get to Budokan when you get to feel Budokan you are officially a major artist. It happened for Clarice, for example, like before Budokan, they were known, of course, in the Anison world, but the, the fandom was pretty limited. After Budokan, the fandom just became so big. So yeah, anyway, um, so I went to the live stage on the first day from an Nike Kecha, and I really liked it. I see, like, their, their songs are pretty, mm, Nice. Uh, the, the song that, like, uh, yeah, you tend to like them. Like they're very simple and uh, very energetic, especially like the group. Like the group performance was very, very energetic, and um, and their fan also very energetic. Like when with Manic Ketcha was kind of for me like a second, uh, a second introduction to Otage because like. Of course, I learned. I started from Ani Song, where like calls are very simple, very basic. Then I went on to AKB48, where you have mixing, you have a, um, name calls and love calls, all that kind of stuff. So it is a bit more complicated. And when you get to underground groups, it just gets like to a completely different level. And uh, so it was like my first approach to some of the more complicated other game, more complicated calls. Uh, for example, like the Kachikoi Kojo and um, other stuff. So, yeah, it was a pretty good experience in in, uh, in seeing how the 
has participated in it at an underground concert at Zota. It's like completely different. Like of course a lot more complicated and uh, a lot more audience participation. You know, this this is what I was saying at the beginning. Like in underground, in the underground idol world, it's a bit different in that the management is not so strict and uh, you can be a more a bit more expensive. I find like. You can like participate a bit, a bit more, not only on events like handshakes or meet and greets, but also on lives. So yeah, the, like after the first day, like the next day, so I decided to go to the to the um, uh, photo session, so I could get a photo with the whole group. And uh, uh, yeah, you can see the photo in the in the um, in Facebook. So basically, all members were there, and we could choose one member to sit next to us and to pose with us and I chose Reon of course well, not of course, I mean didn't know the group but with her was like kind of a uh, uh, you know like a, uh, like a immediate thing like as soon as I saw the group well she's the center so I guess she does attract attentions a lot but yeah as soon as I saw the group uh, I just saw her and say wow she's going to be my Oshi like immediately <laughs> And maybe for the like, she's a very good performer. She's extremely cute, and well. and uh, another very interesting fact about the group is like the manager, the management, like what the they are like mostly an underground group. Like they don't have a big management behind, and their man, one of their manager, was this guy with a. So normally, like normal other group, you see the managers usually somebody in. A, either suit or shirt at least, like pretty well dressed and usually like a bit an older male or anyway like something that has like some elegance to it, you know, like and she's still like the manager of an idol group so it's gonna need to look professional. So this manager from an Kecha he had cowboy hat, had rings on any every finger, long hair. I mean she's like he's like the most flashy character I ever seen doing the manager for an idol group. It was kind of funny. Like he he looked like more more an idol himself, like I don't know then yeah, it was pretty fun to see this guy like managing the idol group. And uh another cool thing that they did with Nike Catch was like on Saturday, so they were also like only performing uh Thursday and Friday. On Saturday they it was like their tour day and they decided to do like a fun event uh, under the Tour Eiffel uh, where they could have a photo session with Maneki Kecha under the Tour Eiffel. That's so cool. Like as I mean if I were like a fan um, a fan I would be so happy of such an opportunity to have like a, um, a photo session with the Tour Eiffel with them. Like that's so cool. Like I really like how the this kind of event organized by their management and I might actually go to the Budokan concert now they think about it because I might be there in uh, September so we think about it but yeah very cool live very cool group and uh, definitely check them out okay so the last group I will talk about is kind of the revelation of uh, of Japan Expo and uh, it's Banzai Japan and they are the winner of this year Tokyo Kando, which is a, um, a big competition between idols in Tokyo. And the winner gets to perform in France at Japan Expo, which to us in Europe it might seem not much, you know. The Japan Expo is not a particularly um, like a big stage, I guess. There are very few idol fans, most people there are, are pretty uninterested. Uh, but for them, it's like uh, like just think of these like young idols. Most of them are, are in small agencies, so it's like the only opportunity for them to be able to perform abroad. And basically, they win uh, like a, a trip to France, which is pretty cool from the Japanese person point of view. And um, and the the competition itself is actually well, I think it, it's only the third edition this year. And uh, one of the winner of the former winner of this competition is actually uh, Louis Twinkle Wink, which have, if you are an Anison fan, you probably have heard of them because now they uh, they became Anison idols and they became well known. So they even performed at Anisama and uh, at Animax. So yeah, 
and they actually started with this competition so I wouldn't like just dismiss it as, as some more competitions probably quite uh, um, uh, quite fiercely fought for and uh, so yeah they are the winner of, uh, of this competition so they got an invitation to perform in, uh, in Japan Expo and before the the convention, I really didn't have any expectations, you know, like uh, I didn't even know them and I wasn't even planning to go to see them. And um, so they actually put up some old school PR. So like, it's something that you ne we never see like mainstream idols do. It's just like going on the street, in this case, in the convention, just going around and distributing flyers. And uh, it actually worked because, like, people just saw them, like, all in the, in their costumes going around, distributing flyers, and uh, and I can show you like the first flyer that was given me, uh, which is this one. So they were just distributing flyers like this, and uh, most of them have personal dedication. Like this was given me to me by Shiori. Uh, which is a very nice girl. We actually talked up a bit, like, and that when she gave me the flyer. And the first day, I had a cute T-shirt, and it turned out that most of the members there are Hello Project fans. So even like during the signature session, like when I went there with the T-shirt, everybody, everybody of them actually commented on that. And we talked about with our favorite groups in Hello Project, with our favorite members. So it was a very, <laughs> very nice conversation there. And it actually turned out like, uh, I mean, she only does uh, showroom every day and she had a lot of viewers. I think she probably the, the most popular member in the group, at least like looking at the, and the, at the showroom number, because every evening she gets around a thousand viewers, which is a very, very big number. So I was actually surprised that uh, basically the most popular member of the group just came uh, came there and talked to me like that so <laughs> it was pretty cool and um, yeah so after that I went to the signature session and uh, with them like uh, I actually got like a bit the feeling of how it is to follow uh, an underground group uh, like how is it to have a, like a, this direct personal relation with them and uh, like in, over the two days of the of the convention i got to talk to many of them and uh, more than a, and a few of them actually i think they they do remember me like i talked quite a bit like shiori with fumi and uh, uh, so yeah and uh, like the second day they already remember my face there they were there like they were, they were doing like pr around the con they were there at each of the of the merchandise sales so just like promoting their group and so they did a signature session they did a photo session which was on saturday i think so i wasn't there and um yeah it was very very cool and also also their live was very good i would say like they're very good performers and uh, this is actually a very recent news that they were they are chosen as the representative of the Kanto B area in the Idol Matsuri, which is another very big competition. And I saw their performance as well in the Idol Matsuri, and with a well deserved victory because they are very, very good performers as well. And uh, their concept is like a bit like between tradi uh, traditional and modern. Like the, the concept, I think, is like. And promoting uh, Japanese um, like tradition to uh, to the world, so they dress like with uh, kind of like traditional looking clothes, and they perform with the fan, and their songs also have very um, um, traditional Japanese music influences. Um, yeah, it's a very very cool concept. Their music is kind of nice, uh, and they're also very good performers, and they are very very nice girls. So I, yeah, and so yeah, I mean like uh, after that, I just kind of started following the group. And now I still like go to their showrooms once in a while when I have time, and most of them actually do showroom very often. Some of them do it every day. So, and I found it very very cool that they still remember me like some of them. This is like like the first time uh, I actually entered Shiori's showroom and then she say oh yeah I remember you from the from the con and I was like wow you you must have met like 
so many people there and uh, it's not like in Japan where if you are foreigners you stand out there are in, in Japan Expo they're all foreigners so um, yeah, I was kind of surprised about that and uh, yeah I was like kind of happy to hear that and and uh, they also very active on Twitter actually like I think another another way I actually got to know them is because uh, um, like doing the Japan Expo yeah of course I like I always doing con I tweet a lot and especially one member I think it was uh, Himawari she basically just like liked every post that I posted about <laughs> out about the Japan Expo and uh, yeah uh, so yeah they they have they run like a lot of PRs through Twitter as well um, which is uh, I think a very effective way to do PR like there are some groups like for example Hello Project they, their individual group they don't have Twitter and I think the, yeah the like what well, they already a very big group but if they did like run twitter a bit more like i don't know like akb or like uh, equal love so they to have this kind of direct interaction i think the probably the, they would become even more well known um, yeah i don't know i think like in the in the in the current age like having uh social like pr through social media is kind of almost a requirement for another group unless you're already very famous then you can do without but if you did uh, it would be just just that big of an advantage and yeah i should probably show you the the sign paper as well from uh, banzai japan so this is it i guess like yeah the reflection is not yeah sorry for the reflection i already put them in plastic uh uh, sleeves of course to protect them because they're just like pieces of paper and um, yeah and just follow them I think they will become a pretty big group in future or they are they're already quite a big group and they will become uh, like a pretty well-known group I think in future like at least seeing seeing them now so yeah definitely check them out and I think yeah this is it for the for my re well, report of, uh, of my experience in Japan Expo so it was very nice I got to meet a lot of uh, groups I got to meet I got to meet also other fans and uh, I didn't like I hadn't spoken French for years before that so I kind of like yeah a bit refreshing on the on my French I guess like but well, basically at the, at the, at the the convention I would say that I spoke maybe 50% French, 50% um, Japanese, so I mean it was like yeah nice uh, to um, I mean just refresh my my languages again and uh, quite well organized I would say and there were a few problematic I was like I was like to talk about that as well like because I can, like there, there must be a, a rant in every video I guess <laughs> yeah and um, I mean like the first one I already said like how they manage like the lottery system and the fact that no I don't know I don't know how they could have done it different because probably they couldn't because it, there, there was a the chance that a lot of people would be interested to go into the signature session with idols and that you needed a lottery but yeah i mean like usually in the idol queue there were a lot of other groups there were like maybe 20 uh, groups in the same queue so it was very long and uh, like going back to queue again it would have not been a very pleasant experience fortunately i actually won every lottery so um yeah i can like i cannot really complain about that uh the main thing that i say I mean, there were like two episodes that really disturbed me at uh, at this thing. One is about the audience. Like, I think it's one of the worst audience I've ever seen in any convention, any idol, any song concert ever. And and it's mainly because of one. Okay, I can overlook the fact that they are like standing still, not doing calls, so everybody can enjoy the concert in their own way. And uh, 
I can even overlook the fact that they like were absolutely non-responsive to the artist. At least most of them, like there were like a few authors as well. But, and most of them, like even the artist say, "I'll oh, clap your hand" or something like that. Many were just so unresponsive that it was painful to watch. What I cannot overlook is like the sea of phones in the audience, like people just there and filming the whole concert with their phone. This is a thing that since I started like following uh, J-pop and J-concerts where like this is absolutely forbidden, I cannot stand anymore. Like just imagine the artist, like she's performing with all her, her, uh, her energy and people are just there and looking at the concert through the phone screen. This is so ridiculous, like people don't do it in concert, like this is like, n this is not a way to enjoy the concert. You can find, uh, in this age you can find, find videos of concert online, uh, most of like, you, you can buy DVDs uh, and with the quality is much better, why would you do that? Like the most ridiculous guy that I saw, he actually even had a pen light, well there were very very few pen lights in the audience, but this guy he had a pen light, he held the pen light, and the phone and was just filming like that with the pen line in his hand. This is like the most ridiculous scene that I ever seen in a con or in a concert or anywhere. So like yeah, that that was one of the problems. The other problem, which also has to do with the audience, is like but most of it organization they're doing the equal lock uh, stage. So there were two stages in the in the in Japan Expo, well two big ones at least, and one of them had a seating area, so like uh, it was a stage and all the seats around, and the other one was not just a standing area, so in the standing stage there was no problem, everybody stands and that's it, uh, but in the seating, uh, in the stage with the seating area, we were required to sit, I, I repeat, we were required to sit doing an idol concert, Okay, so during that concert, I actually was sitting next to like some Japanese guy who actually knew their stuff, and they were like doing calls and everything. So it was like probably the most fun concert I, I was having until that moment because at the other stages, there was not such a thing. Like everybody didn't know who there were like maybe three or four people just like doing otake, and um, it was kind of over underwhelming in that sense. At that stage, finally, I could like stand up and doing some otake, and then a staff member came and say. Uh, can you sit because the people behind they cannot see but you know what the people behind us were doing they were watching the football match on the phone because like that concert was doing it was like at the same time as the france semi-finals in the world cup and people were there just like looking at the match on their phone i just saw like a guy like two rows next to like, in, in, uh, like near me was just looking at the match on their phone and what the you are not required to be there. Why, if you're interested in football, just go the hell out, watch football at the bar. There were like some booths at the Japan Expo who were also like broadcasting football. Just go there. Why would you go to a J-pop concert to watch football? That's like the most ridiculous thing I ever seen. Yeah, I already said it. Like this, this Japan Expo was like ridiculous in in many sense and. Yeah, I won't. I won't comment it any further. Like you should already like figure out how ridiculous it is. Like to to go to a concert, which like a no unique opportunity to have equal love in Europe, and to watch football. So this was my experience at Japan Expo, uh, my my short report, and uh, I hope that it interested you. Maybe you will find out found out about some new groups through my my small talk and um, yeah so as I said I kind of want this corner to become a semi-regular thing so I already thought about some topics that I will talk about in the next episodes and I will not announce it here because plans might change and, and but yeah I will see you at the next episode of Idle Talk.